We're going to head immediately to Jamaica because they are about to celebrate their 55th um, independence anniversary there. Are some challenges for Jamaica, some of them we can learn from, some of them we have a particular stake in because of the boycott and the relationship we have with them, all of course being uh, part of the region. Commentator and gender specialist is Nadine Spence. She's in Jamaica this morning. Let us say a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Ms. Spence. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning to you, too. It is good to have you on with us. Thank you for taking the time. We've got a little window here, but a lot of things to cover at the same time. First of all, happy independence. You celebrate that tomorrow. Thank you very much. Well, today is actually the 6th, which is our independence day, but tomorrow we have a holiday. Mm, so that's right. That's right. Today, right. it, mm-hmm. it, it, was the, it, it is the 6th, the 6th, 1962 uh, was exactly right. when this happened. The country of Jamaica, a lot of challenges there. Let me see if I can tap into a couple of them. The first question we ask is, it used to be the beacon of the region at one time. It still is the beacon in many areas, but economically having a difficult time. Where is Jamaica th- at age 55 economically? I think um, <clears throat> one of the things we are all uh, no. Um, settling in with it, how countries like ours are post-independent, uh, post sorry, post-colonial um, countries in in regions like ours with our particular vulnerabilities as, as it relates to economic stability. That what with countries that are that were born out of our situation of um, being dependent on a metropole or, or, or whose economies were 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 crafted in a particular way, mm-hmm. that we are going through different kinds of challenges economically. One, we are small, so economic viability is a, is a problem. Two, um, before 1962, the resources and, and, um, and natural, na- the natural talent and skills that we had as a country mm-hmm. were exported for development to another state. So that when we began life as an independent nation, we, we began from a place of disadvantage. Mm. And so we, but we had to quickly catch up with the, with the other economies of the world and, and be integrated in the world systems of economies. And so I think that left us back a little. Mm-hmm. I think other things have happened. I think um, quickly we got, we had to, to turn to the, to the, um, uh, to the IMF. Uh, and the World Bank to access funding it was just 10 years or so after independence. That was difficult and has continued to dog us, even though we are in a new set of arrangements with the IMS. Mm-hmm. I think um, the fact that we had poor infrastructure coming out of 196, coming out of um, colonialism going into 1962. And so when I talk about poor infrastructure, I mean the, the stuff on which nation is built, hospital, education, good roads, um, public buildings, even though those were in a way there for the function of the colonial authority, mm-hmm. well, they need to be there in a different way for the for the to meet the needs of a nation. And they, those were not fully developed mm-hmm. at, in 1962. So we're talking about yes. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Complete. I'm sorry. So, so I'm talking about how poor infrastructure, um, lack of resources, um, lack of investment potential has kind of kept us back and along with that of course has to do with our own discipline as as self-managed people and our inability sometimes to stick to our growth path or to stick to the, uh, the the agenda that we have set for ourselves and and to handle ourselves in such a way that would indicate that we're working in the best interest of a nation. Jamaica at 55 is what we're talking about, and my guest is commentator Nadine Spence. The uh, primary export of Jamaica now, or the foreign exchange earner, is it, uh, would it be tourism, or is there any natural resource that is being used to, uh, to go along with the relative uh, instability of tourism because the fortunes of that can change from time to time? Uh, what is the primary export or revenue foreign exchange earner for Jamaica? Our primary foreign exchange earner is, is um, tourism, but we also have remittances. And so um, Jamaicans in the diaspora and their contribution to the economy is a significant contribution contribution to the national um, budget. But remember, we are also boxed out. We also have a lot of box out. Mm-hmm. But, but, but again... Um, we, are, we were moving away from bauxite, even though now I see where a number of the plants are being reopened. But I also note that those are never earned, that were never owned by Jamaicans, mm-hmm. so that 
um, even though Jamaicans might have worked in the bauxite industry, the plant themselves were divested in the 1970s because the, the young Jamaica didn't have the resources at the time to make use of the potential of bauxite. Understood. Um, so the other export would have been sugar. But again, if you remember, several things happened in the 1990s, mm. including um, the death of the Lomé Agreement and the preferential access to, to markets that would have been part of the package of, mm. of decolonization. Um, and, and because we lost access to those preferred markets for our exports such as banana raw, and sugar, those industries kind of went on there as well. Once Lomé, uh, once Lomé collapsed, um, then a, a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the output of the region suffered along with it. I want along to take, it, yes, right? I want to take you as we discuss in Jamaica at 55 into that area that is not unique to Jamaica, but it is a challenge for all governments, all countries in the world, and particularly in the Caribbean, the challenge of combating crime. Speak to me about that. Um, I, I think it, there, there's of course, you know, the problem that Jamaica has is, you know, having one of the highest murder rates in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think um, fighting crime requires resources. Fighting crime requires an understanding of the structural and systemic issues that contribute to the reality of uh, a country that, you know, is, is bogged down by, by this reality. And I, when I talk about that, I mean there's a link between this crime and poverty and lack of resources and lack of opportunities for the most vulnerable. Mm. So it's not just about effective policing, it's about addressing some core issues that stand as, 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 as central to the crime problem. And so um, whereas we would have come up with all kinds of different policing strategies or crime fighting strategies to respond to it, we are finding that we are not getting control of it because the resources that are needed are really supposed to go into the different things that I spoke about, the kind of infrastructure, community building initiatives um, that would see us um, opening opportunities to more people so that people feel as if they have other, mm -hmm. they have, they have choices and they yes. can be invested mm -hmm. in their own destiny. That is a problem that um, that is faced, as we said, all across the Caribbean. Just quickly on that area yeah. of crime, Trinidad and Tobago is referred to oft times as a transshipment point. Is Jamaica's crime wave, in addition to the whole question of unemployment and, and the disconnect of a lot of people who feel marginalized, is Jamaica's primary problem one uh, as a transshipment point or an origin uh, or um, an originator of of, 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 of of drugs and particularly marijuana well I'm not sure how much of that is now um, linked to the, the issue of, of of being transshipment I know they at a point there was that conversation being had in the public space um, but I think in any country mm -hmm. like ours where we cannot Fully police our borders because we are an island, mm -hmm. so we are quite poor, and we do not have the resources to police all of it. So we rely on others as well to assist with that. And, and that, I think wherever that that is a reality, that's something we are going to have to contend with. Um, I think our latest problem now has to do with something called scamming, and um, what information technology has allowed is access to people and um, access to the easy movement of money, and 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 so um, what is happening now is 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 built on that. So what it tells you is that the make a crime problem is linked to other places across the world. It's not a but Mr. Uh, Nadine, Nadine, to... I have a little problem with your phone breaking up if you can hold your position there for a moment. But I got the gist of what you were saying there. As I said, we've got a yeah. little window here and there is a situation with Trinidad and Jamaica where we had a boycott situation not too long ago because of the immigration problem that led to that. Can we say that uh, we are over that? That is no longer a, a, an issue as far as Jamaicans having that relationship with, with, with Trinidad and Tobago and, and, and the question of, uh, you know, goods coming coming there and Jamaicans sending their, their, their products here. Would you say that Jamaicans in the main are over that problem, or do we still have that distrust in that problem? I, th I, I, I think it was for a time a, a very um, public conversation. I don't know if it resulted in any, any change in, in the buying power in what was happening on the market, but it was, a, it was more a political problem, I think, in terms of 
the two countries learning to handle issues of diplomacy much better than they were mm -hmm. um, with the idea that as countries in the Caribbean, we really can't do without each other. Indeed. So I, I think, I think we, we in the, there's no longer that conversation in the public domain. Fantastic. I, have, I can't specifically speak about what is happening on the market mm -hmm. in terms of purchase of goods and so on, but certainly there is not that conversation in the public domain. Is anymore. there any conversation in Jamaica about the Caribbean Court of Justice being finally adopted as the final court of appeal? No, there isn't. I think um, they are, every now and then there's a general conversation about the UK Privy Council and about our our sovereign state, our state in terms of whether or not we are going to go continue to go with the Queen. So that conversation about the court, the Caribbean Court of, of of Justice is usually had in that broader context of are we truly an independent nation, and and how we remove such things as the Queen as head of state, and how we we get rid of the Privy Council. Nanny of the Maroons may be wondering what is taking Jamaica that long to recognize that we must cut the cord. However, that is a different conversation. I will conclude with asking you this. Is the Caribbean single market and economy working for Jamaicans? Are they seeing this as something in a region that they are getting a chance to not only attract regional tourism, getting a chance to work in other parts of the region, but are they seeing it as a a benefit to Jamaica, in conclusion, uh, Nadine? No, not really, because is, since Caribbean are very far from Jamaica, um, because of where we are located physically, um, we are in the middle of the Caribbean Sea, and we are not uh, uh, close to the Eastern Caribbean. We are closer to Miami and to Cuba. For that reason, the, the, the feeling and, and taste of Caribbean has to be deliberately crafted for Jamaica, and there's not much of that in our public, in our political space. Well, in other so words... Then, mm -hmm. So there's not much of our discussion about the CSME outside of the academic kinds of discussion that one would find if one is, is close to UE or some other academic centre. I think I will have to lose my um, federation head somewhere down at halfway tree, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I thank yeah. Nadine Spence, commentator and gender specialist in Jamaica. Thank you so much. Jamaica at 55, celebrating their 55th year of independence today. Uh, congratulations to you and the people of Jamaica from us here. Thank you. I thank you so much. You have yourself a wonderful day, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me to speak with you. Bye-bye. Pleasure was all mine. Nadine Spence, thank you so much.